Today on Just Ask John Eeks, we're stealing your roof, brushing up on trowels, and rethinking about how we recycle. It's all coming up next on Just Ask John Eeks. Welcome to the show. I'm Jan Eeks, and I'm going to spend the next half hour looking at your home improvement questions. Richard of Bridge North, Ontario, needs to reshingle his home, and he wants to know what I think about metal roofs. Well, first of all, let's see why today's metal roof doesn't look like Grandpa's barn used to. Steel roofing today is not what it used to be. The new steel that's out there, it doesn't have that commercial look to it. It's more of a residential looking profile that looks like tile or it could look like shake or it could look like slate. And the coatings on them are not just regular paint on it. Right now you have granular coatings that give it a much more authentic look to it. Steel roofing is a lot more lightweight than conventional roofing. It's also actually lighter than paper asphalt shingles. Much lighter than slate or clay tile, which can be up to 12 pounds a square foot. The steel roofing now is only one and a half pounds a square foot. So you get something that's a lot lighter, can go right over top of the existing, and it's actually stronger than conventional roofing materials. What happens with uh, painted metal is that ice and snow build up on the roof, and then when the weather warms up, you get big sheets of ice that come tumbling down and destroy everything in its path. With the new steel that we have now with a granular texture on it, you don't get big sheets sliding off. The snow just stays on the roof and melts off without damaging your property. Pricing-wise, it's more expensive than asphalt shingle, obviously, but it's a lot less expensive than, say, slate or clay tiles. The initial cost is more expensive than asphalt shingles, but in the long run, you're saving money because asphalt shingles nowadays, the way they're making them, they're making them thinner and thinner. They don't last that long. 10, 15 years, you've got to redo your roof. So long term, it comes out to be a lot more economical because you do it once, you do it right, and you never have to worry about your roof again. Well, metal roofs don't even look like metal anymore. They look like just about everything else. You know, one of the concerns we've always had about metal roofs is they can get very noisy, particularly when you had a hailstorm on Grandpa's old barn. It sounded like this. But when you take that same metal and put the granular finish that he was talking about on it, well, listen to this. It's that dead sound. So the snow doesn't slide anymore, and they're not noisy. So there's some really good options in metal roofs. In fact, let's take a quick look at the preparation of a, of a whole roof, whether we're going to put metal or asphalt on it. There are some details that have to be done right. Number one, when we just have the bare deck here, we first of all put this thing on the edge. It's called a drip edge, and this is sort of what it looks like. And this piece goes on the front edge. Its purpose is that the water comes off the edge, drips into the rain gutter properly. So this would be positioned just right for your rain gutters. Then, for the first part of the roof, we put on a thing called Grace Ice and Water Shield. If you look back by my steps, you can see the size that it really is when you're dealing with the real thing. I just want to show you a tip I'm putting on. Now, this is all scaled down a lot smaller than you would have on a real roof. The problem is that it's got this paper backing, and this is sticky. And if you open it up too much, it's sort of like trying to do Christmas presents and you get wrapped instead of the presents. Here's what you do. If you open up just the first little part, it goes over this drip edge. Now, the rest of it's still got its backing. So you see I can roll it out this way and then pull this back as we go, carefully moving that along. It's the only way you can handle a three-foot roll that may be 40, 50 feet long and not have it stick to everything except the roof. And that's the way you can get it to come right out nice and smooth all the way along here. And then that gets forced right in. Now, when it gets hot with the sun, it even flattens out more. That's your first level. comes up about three feet. And then what we're going to do is put on roofing paper. And it overlaps. As you can see, there's a marker and everything for it as we want to come up. And the roofing paper just gets stapled here and there onto the roof to hold it into place. That's a simple one. Then more drip edge. This is often forgotten. Over the edge. And you see how they all overlap? The water flows down. That's the key to really getting the basics of the roof. Whether you're going to put on metal roofing or asphalt shingles. Now, Scott, 
from Dalkeith, Ontario, is asking about the metal roof on his 150-year-old farmhouse. Here, take a look at this picture, and you can see that's the kind of metal roof. Yeah, you know, like you saw in Grandpa's barn. Now, it leaks around the nails, and he wants to know if there's an economical way of waterproofing it without replacing those big panels. Here's the secret, is that in the original, this is what the original looks like. It's a screw coming up like this, and it has a rubber washer under the head of the screw. Now, if that's leaking from sort of wearing with time, you can go in with a larger screw or a nail, and if you can't find the right things, use plumbing washers, especially if you're only dealing with half a dozen or so problem screws. And this washer actually then pushes down on the metal and seals it up. The other possibility is there are special roofing elastomeric coatings. It's like a rubber paint. You could paint the whole thing. They're fairly expensive, but they do work if you get a quality one. Now, many people will just replace the whole panel. For those of you who climb on the roof with those heavy bundles of asphalt shingles, you'll love this improvement on an old idea. It's called Easy Out, and you'll see just why. This is what I have invented. My bracket here has a gusset and a heel and you can take it out from the bottom. Let me show you the bracket that's available on the market today, which is this red one. When you install this bracket here by nailing it up on top, the only way to take it out would be from the top. And as you can see, I'm doing damage to the bracket because I can't get it out from the top. So what I would do, I would hit the bottom to try to get it out. And by doing that, I would deform the bracket. But with the easy out, you just tap the nails in, you tap it on the bottom, and the bracket comes out without ever being hurt because of the gusset in the heel. You strike here, you don't have to take it out from the top anymore. So if any of you have ever really dealt with these things, you'll find that's a great thing to have a more sturdy one. Look at this, he's even got an adjustable one here because this needs to come out horizontal. So on a low slope roof like this, we would drop it down. You see how that makes it nice and horizontal this way. So the same strength to be able to put it on and it goes right up on the shingles and bang that thing right back out. And one last thing while we're on the roof, as you're setting this up, if you're doing those metal roofing, you're gonna need something to attach the metal to. If you saw in the video, they were putting two, two by twos up there, and then those metal panels were coming in this way, screwing in in the front, and working their way right on up. So there's always some kind of strapping to get it to attach down. That's really pretty easy. Now with this and these metal brackets, you now have a solid new choice in roofing tools. Up next, sorting out spatulas and trowels.